house in Elmira, New York, where Jane Roberts first made contact with Seth in December of 1963. From her second floor apartment, Jane spent countless hours in trance speaking for Seth as her husband Robert Butts patiently transcribed every word. The Seth phenomenon has resulted in numerous books, thousands of pages of unpublished material, and the development of a philosophy that has changed the lives of many of us. I'm Richard Kendall. I was a member of Jane's class for a number of years, an experience one doesn't forget. The tape you are about to see was recorded on June 4, 1974. It begins with an interview of Jane and Rob conducted by Harold Channa and filmed by Stephen Bell. Following the interview are excerpts from Jane's class filmed later that evening containing the only visual record we have of Seth speaking through Jane. I was at that class, and little did I imagine that over 12 years later, I'd be introducing this tape. This evening we're coming to you from Elmira, New York, and uh, we are really very, very honored and privileged to be able to be in the living room and the, uh, the seminar room of one of the very most significant uh, individuals on planet Earth, that have had experiences with an altered state of consciousness, uh, Ms. Jane Roberts, who, along with her husband, Robert Butts, have been investigating uh, over these past 10 odd years, if I'm correct, I'm not exactly sure, but approximately 10 Roger. years, another state of consciousness that than that than which we are normally accustomed to uh, dealing with. I'd like to welcome you very, very much to the program, and I thank you very much for inviting me here to be able to talk to you. I wonder, perhaps, uh, whoever, I'm not sure uh, which one of you might like to pick up on it first, but uh, there will be some people in the audience, believe it or not, although it's a pretty aware audience that watches this program, but there will be some people in the audience who aren't aware with the, of the material, the Seth material. Could you maybe just give us a little bit of a background for the general audience of the means by which, in a general way, you came in contact with this kind of consciousness and how it, got st how, how it all got started? Bob? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this began uh, late in 1963. Uh, one evening, Jane was uh, writing poetry after supper, as is her, her, her usual custom. And uh, she went into an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That was very unexpected by her. And uh, she uh, had an out-of-body experience. She found her consciousness leaving her body. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, she began to write in sort of an automatic script. Now, this experience lasted for over a half an hour. And when Jane returned to her usual state of consciousness, she uh, discovered that she produced this uh, script called the universe is uh, idea constructed. This is in one evening? In one yeah. evening, after supper. Mm -hmm. I was painting in my studio and uh, she was sitting out here. And I thought it was awfully quiet out here. Mm -hmm. and so I finally came out to see what uh, she was so quiet about. Yes. And it was just at the end of this experience. Uh, yeah. She wasn't even able to uh, use her voice to call me to tell me what was going on. Good heavens. Had anything like that happened to you before? No, and actually Similar? it lasted uh -huh. a lot longer. It was uh -huh. uh, over, well over an hour. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I just, just um, oh, you know, I, I've been a poet okay. since yes. I was a child. And uh -huh. I was writing. Mm -hmm. and the next thing I knew, um, my consciousness was just gone. And I, it wasn't in out of body in the respect that I had another body mm -hmm. or thought I did. My consciousness through like the window and then into the leaves and into everything and it That's wasn't until I came back yeah. that I found this script and realized that you know my I had to have written it yeah when you came back and you were in you you weren't you weren't it, there's two separate planes you weren't aware of the other as you were I wasn't aware of my body at all you or the manuscript or writing or anything I was completely what did you think gone. When I was doing it, right? Oh, after. Uh, after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get to what you were thinking. Uh, as, as, uh, the you? first thing I did was call for Ron, uh, and, and I saw the script, and I started reading it like mad. But the thing of it was that um, the stuff that was in the script was stuff I had felt while I was out, mm -hmm. to some extent, in that um, the script, Again, the title was The Physical Universe as Idea Construction. The idea being that uh, everything is a result 
of idea and has consciousness. But when I was out, yeah. I would go in yeah. atoms and molecules, uh -huh. and I felt their consciousness. Yeah. But then when I read the script, mm -hmm. it was terribly hard to accept portions of it uh, because it pretty much went against what I've been taught. But I mean, just just having experienced that, I mean, what was your reaction to Wild? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I literally, I had yeah. done no reading yeah. in this field. Yeah, I had right. done nothing. So as far yeah. as I knew, this had never happened before yeah. to another it wasn't individual. Super it was something more Anyways, than super It was, yeah. you know, where did I go? How yeah. did I get out of my body? Uh, this right. is fantastic. Then I would presume that on the on the on the on the, on the trail of that, you probably uh, began to uh, let's see. Did you begin to investigate this field? Yeah, then right. Edgar Casey, who had had experiences similar, or did you begin to investigate the well, field? Well, I was a writer. Okay. And mm -hmm. so um, I was. I had just finished uh, my first uh, science fiction novel, which was paperback, yeah. uh, called The Rebellers, and I was looking for something else to write. Mm -hmm. And Robbie. <laughs> came up with the idea, joking. He said, why don't you do a book? This must have something to do with ESP or something. Right. So why don't you get some books, read up on it, um, try some experiments, mm -hmm. and if they don't work, you can always say that, well, I tried all this stuff, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And if it works, well, you know, who yeah. knows? Yeah. So we started out, um, we got two or three paperbacks. We found out about leisure boards yeah. and everything. And we borrowed a Ouija board. We didn't even buy one. <laughs> and uh, after, I forget, once or twice or something, we started to get stuck on the board. And with the um, psychological knowledge I had then, the first thing I thought of was, well, it's a subconscious. Uh, Rob was pushing it, or Rob would say yeah. I was pushing it. So we went through that long yes. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And after only um, <clears throat> maybe five or six, seven sessions with that, uh, Seth came through vocally. I would yeah. start to know what was going to be said, and then I would start to want to speak. Okay, I'm wondering if maybe we could for the audience now. When you say Seth came through, maybe <laughs> right. we could, uh, you know, make the Seth then... Okay, maybe uh, the audience would right. know who was Seth. Perhaps some of them. Seth would be... Well, on the board, mm -hmm. the pointer would uh, go over the alphabet right. and spell messages. Okay. And uh, after a while, the messages said they came from a personality called Seth. And I didn't particularly believe in survival of personality mm -hmm. to begin with. Uh, I also figured that if personality survived, they had a lot better things to do than come through on Ouija boards. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I thought it was from a level of mind subconscious or something. Uh, the material that we got, however, was excellent. And I was enough of a critical writer myself mm -hmm. to know that the material was good. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have continued. It Would didn't make mm -hmm. sense yeah. in a philosophical way and, yeah. if, um, yeah. and it showed no um, extravagance in terms mm -hmm. of um, going overboard religiously, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was sound psychologically yeah. as far as we could tell. Yeah. And I, you were not cynical at all of these things, but you were, you did have a he healthy, uh, yeah. uh, you, you, it, it comes through in the book is what I'm trying to say, is it comes through that you really were, uh, I don't know how to express it, but you were, uh, you had a healthy that. respect. Uh, for that, it, it, it had a very fine attitude toward yeah, this. Uh, James uh, yeah. was a I, I don't know quite how to express it, but um, you, you were not naive, uh, you know. But you were still open. But you were still guarded. You were just perfect. Right. It seems to me. I still think we were very lucky in mm -hmm. that uh, we had <laughs> yeah. not read an awful lot of the current occult literature. Right. Because if I had worked bored and uh, mm -hmm. had read a lot and perhaps believed what a lot of people believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, that this had to be either a good spirit yeah. or a bad spirit or that this was dangerous. Mm -hmm. I really don't know what I would have done. Yeah. The yeah. idea of possession never crossed my mind uh -huh. because I never accepted it to start with. Yeah. I mean, it just didn't exist for me. Right, okay, yeah. Well, Jane didn't even believe in uh, reincarnation. <laughs> you did not believe in reincarnation prior to this. And, but your and attitude, afterwards. And afterwards, but now. Yeah. 
Well, we've modified our attitudes a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I did a program a little while ago just to, uh, with some people from, is it the, uh, with the Edgar Casey people? Right. And they said that Edgar Casey, when he was having um, uh, uh, evidences presented to him from his good Christian uh, conscious background, evidence presented to him of reincarnation, he had a tremendous inner turmoil yeah. accepting that which seemed counter to that which he consciously had conceived within him yeah. until he finally was able to work it out and accept it. But he had a tremendous inner conflict with, with that, you know, which would yeah. be more easily acceptable to certain Eastern Right. Yeah. You know. yeah, they would uh, take yeah. it in stride. But he did seem to work that yeah. out in an amicable kind of way, and I presume you have. Yeah. Well, Jane's well. still in the process of doing Well, she's <coughs> helping a lot yeah. of people work that out, I think, because it's, yeah. a, it's an important question. Yeah, uh, she doesn't... Uh, mm -hmm. She's not against the idea particularly. Yeah, I guess maybe that's the point I was trying to make before, is that she was, uh, you know, the idea, you wasn't against the idea of these things. You didn't even believe in it, but you still were willing to look at things anew. I mean, yeah. you were a poet, so you must have had a, you were willing to look at things anew. You weren't closed-minded. Well, that's, that's, that's a good point. Uh, to, you know, yeah, I'd like to say that... But it was a healthy openness. Here. Right. Uh, when the whole thing began, uh, it didn't take us long at all to realize that it was a creative... Mm -hmm. endeavor yeah. and uh, that underlay everything else we did and, and that's the main reason we decided to uh, continue yeah. I think that if, as Jane said earlier it had been uh, too much of anything uh, too sentimental or too uh, religious right. or, or uh, too even yeah. Uh, pragmatic yeah, yeah, yeah. we'd have turned away from yeah, it right. but as it was it, it suited us of course right. and uh, so we chose to uh, yeah, and that, that, if I may say that comes through the book the book is beautiful yeah I mean, well that's the thing that we're mostly interested in uh -huh. uh, telling people about but I wonder maybe you could continue a little bit more chronologically that so there was this 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 Anthony Seth made himself a victim. <clears throat> maybe you could tell them a little bit about Seth State or self Seth session. Well, after the uh, board session mm -hmm. stopped, yeah. as they did very quickly, I just began speaking the words automatically mm -hmm. for Seth without knowing what I was saying until I came out of trance. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no training per se for this. Uh, no self-hypnosis, nothing, it just happened. Although I did give consent. Mm -hmm. That is, um, had I not wanted to do it, mm -hmm. it wouldn't even happen. Okay, but I was right. so curious, I wanted to know mm -hmm. what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I paced the floor constantly in trance. I refused to sit down, because I'd read about Casey, yeah. and he lay down on the couch, and I thought, no, not for me, I'm not going to, you know, and I figured that if I didn't like what was going on, I could run, which yeah. was silly, because I was the one that was between it. <laughs> Uh, and then it took, I don't know, maybe two or three years before I'd sat down, uh -huh. before I then would close my eyes. Uh -huh. And then there was a period where I closed my eyes and never opened them. And then uh, where all of a sudden uh, I opened them, but I was in a deeper, of course, kind of trance than I had been before that transition. Uh, the one point on reincarnation I wanted to mention, though, too, and so Seth. A lot covered in the video. Go ahead. Okay, uh, was that uh, one of my first short stories was on reincarnation. Uh -huh. And I thought as an idea uh -huh. or a concept, it was great. I loved to play around with it. Uh -huh. But when this starts happening, when, say, magic becomes real, uh -huh. and all of a sudden you're told, well, you had this kind of life, or you did this, or yeah. this is a fact, yeah, yeah. then I bombed. <clears throat> because uh, it was one thing for me to play around with the concept and think, well, I go for it or I don't, yeah. or what. Yeah. And another to um, accept it as a definite fact of existence. Yeah. And uh, also, I don't like and never have, and Seth doesn't either, the idea of karma, uh, as it's been uh, spoken about so much, or the idea of guilt where people um, believe, for example, that they're suffering in this life because of a karma that they have in a past life, I don't believe in that kind of a connection. Yep. Yeah. And also I believe that all time happens at once. Mm -hmm. So reincarnations have to exist at the same time as this life. And there has to be a constant give and take. All at once. No. Right. I like the idea of, say, simultaneous yeah. life. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm sorry. You know, not at all. That's very interesting. I just hope we're not getting too far. There's a tremendous amount of information contained in what you just said. It's very yeah. poetic. It's also complicated. No, but it's it's also very uh, a tremendous economy of language. It's beautiful that you 
uh, a lot of information contained in there. You do not have a sense of uh, of the. Uh, you, you take some exception to karma as it's generally been uh, interpreted through certain of the yeah. approaches to understanding that of the consciousness. But there are uh, a, there is a, a time continuum while things are happening. All there is an all at onceness to the events. There is a certain continuum or a, uh, a uh, uh, there are past lives or past experiences that people can be aware of and in touch with. Mm -hmm. You have become aware of the past uh, experiences of your own, is my right in that? Uh, to, to a small degree. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, it's not something that uh, we've especially avoided. Uh, uh -huh. We have a little information on it, and the rest of the time we've just been too busy. Yeah, there's and we're also sort of saving that there. for a. Uh -huh. There was a. There was a. There was a. Right. There was Seth. There was experiences in Denmark. And yeah, a few things like that in the very beginning. You see, mm -hmm. which uh, intrigued us no end because we'd never even heard of uh, this sort of thing. That's a tremendous. You see, which was uh, that's what I meant earlier when I said it was creative uh -huh. because uh, to us to even uh, hear of this sort of thing was something new to us. Yeah. And uh, we didn't know what to make of it, mm -hmm. but we wanted to continue. And, and, uh, and then when Jane began to hear the words in her head, yeah. we didn't know what that meant either. Mm -hmm. But we decided to uh, continue because everything else seemed to be uh, working all right in our daily lives. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then I wonder, I wonder, this kind of experience, was there a very wide community of people that you could communicate with? We told no one you know? for a long time. You did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, we told no one, mm. and um, Is that we watched. Your own doubts, or was it? We didn't know what we no, were doing. I, I know that you had some doubts and wondering. You <laughs> yeah. found that so yeah. beautiful in the books. You were really honest well, you, and open how you, you felt. It was surprising. To. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Which was very good. I mean, well, even if we'd wanted yeah. to run out and tell somebody, we yeah. didn't know who to tell. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This stuff wasn't accepted right. in those days to begin with, but. Uh, until I actually started speaking for Seth, I had never heard of anyone speaking for anyone. Right. I had heard yeah. of, um, what is it, Ruth Kernan. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had never heard of anyone speaking for anyone. So again, when that mm -hmm. happened, for all I knew, I was the only one alive. You yeah. know. No. But I wasn't about to go and tell the neighbors yeah. particularly either. Yeah. Not <laughs> <At> the time. <laughs> what about, uh, uh, about uh, now? Do you think there are very many people that... Uh, my mail. Um, people. people are very interested in yeah. this, and there are um, certainly spiritualistic groups uh, where they have a so-called spirit guide. Now, I don't call Seth a spirit guide right. either. Um, I find myself in a peculiar position in that uh, I don't particularly accept I do want to watch my words. Yes. <laughs> the dogma of any particular group, yeah. organization. It, this was my experience. I wasn't about to have it interpreted mm -hmm. uh, for me by others. Mm -hmm. I never thought of Seth as some white cloaked spirit who was just floating around. Mm -hmm. uh, part of my life's work certainly is to try to understand the nature of our personalities, mm -hmm. of, you know, our personalities, mm -hmm. what abilities we've got, mm -hmm. uh, what happens so that we can get this kind of information. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I really hope is that people would begin to trust their own uh, revelatory experience and not automatically cloak it right. in whatever dogma they okay. believe in. Uh huh. Right. That's beautiful. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Beautiful language. No, that's really. Uh -huh. That's really fun. But I wonder if we could back up just a little bit again for some of that old and come back again to Seth. And mm -hmm. Seth is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, you, you have a Seth session. And excuse me if I'm saying, but you go into another. You go into another consciousness. Right. And a spirit. Is that the right word? How do we, how do we, how do we Seth calls himself what a essence? personality. Energy personality. Ed essence. Energy personality essence. Seth, who had an existence in the past. Right. Many. Comes many. many existences in the past, which he is aware of and has aware of a new consciousness, and comes and speaks through you. Mm -hmm. And you are in a trance state. Now you see that would be something. Right. I'm not even sure we've made that clear to people, but right. yeah. that's what happened. And that's Seth. That's who we're talking about. Right. So we're talking another consciousness coming through you. Right. You are a medium right. for that. Right. You've come to know Seth pretty well. Robbie has. Uh huh. Right. You you're not aware of it. No, that is one of the. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Other people relate to him mm -hmm. uh, because they see the phenomena and mm -hmm. they see Seth come through. Yeah. Whatever yeah. terms you want to use. Yeah. Uh, where I am not able to relate in that same 
way. Mm -hmm. But you have uh, your feelings, uh, your interior experiences are unique. Right. And uh, no one else can approach those. See, in the beginning, Jane was always asking me, uh, uh, what did he say? Uh, how did he say it? Yes. Uh, was he nice to these people that were here? Yeah. And so forth and so uh -huh. on. And I would do my best to explain, but this is all from uh, an observer's yes. standpoint. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean as much as uh, her own subjective experience. Right. So uh, through the books, we're really trying to uh, disseminate that information. And through. Yes, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's really, that's really, um, that's really, oh, no, it's really, cool. I'm wondering if I come back and pick up on, uh, on, the, on the other thing where you said that, all right, so we have this, this new kind of uh, uh, touch with a consciousness, which is giving information about uh, a consciousness that's not normally in people's cognition, extremely important information. Now, at that time, that contact with Seth became firm about when now would you say? When would that have been? Would it have been 60? I'd say in, uh, early in 1964. Right. It, but it would have it been happened happened when just about It began about late in 63. Just about a decade ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And just we've about been working with it ever since. Yeah. All right. and, then, and, and you were not able, then you had a certain, probably I would assume, a certain sense of uh, personal, and I use the word very advisedly, unease, or at least wonderment, and not not quite known, which has probably been becoming less and less characteristic of your attitude toward this phenomenon than it was originally. So you've been becoming more confident with this this than through the time. I yeah, I'd, I'd right. say, okay. I guess, that we felt as if, mm -hmm. again, because we knew so little, yeah. that we were explorers and yeah, we right, were exactly. going to be, be very careful right. about exploring something we didn't understand, but yeah. we were going to do it. Right. Wow. Um, Very good. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 And, and so, and then I guess maybe the thing, I, if you don't, and, and that uh, you were doing this, and then as you began to then extend out, there weren't very many other people that you were able to get in contact with or that were able to give you a sense of positive appreciation or understanding that right. there were similar <coughs> or, or, or situations that they were familiar with that would yeah. give credence in their own experience to that which you are. Yeah. When uh, after it began, uh, yeah. I went out and got a few books, and uh, I wrote to a few people. Yes. Some of the authors of these books. Yes. And the replies we got uh, didn't satisfy us at all. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And we quickly learned that uh, we had a chance here, in mm -hmm. a creative way, to yes. uh, make a contribution. Right. And uh, at the same time, learn on our own yes. as we went along. Yeah. So all of these uh, factors intrigued us. No end. Right. See? Yeah. Because it, they were based on the strengths of our personalities. So yeah. Especially Jane's ability with words. Uh -huh. and so forth. we knew it. It was obvious that uh, her writing ability was a valuable yes. asset here. Uh -huh. And uh, my uh, working with images as an artist. Right. That came in handy in all kinds of ways also. Right. And then you, you were you were you were you were respond. You have taken responsibility for. Uh, uh, transcribing or taking right. the message that right. is and handling that with uh, yeah. we tried with, uh, several different methods. That's very important. Right. That yeah. that be Extremely done. important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I still I still take down uh, Seth's uh, material by hand. I see. In our own sessions in yes. class, uh -huh. uh, recorders uh -huh. are used, and Seth speaks in a different way. But uh, we get a a more concise and uh, I think a. Uh, more inclusive approach uh -huh. in our own material, which comes out in the books. Then and you it's do different than it is in class. Mm -hmm. Then you do in class. Right. Why do you think that is? Well, in class well, it relates to people. I yeah, see. Yes, there, there might be, say, 25 or 30 people, all with their own approaches I and see. questions and things. It's uh -huh. bound to be different than just two people uh -huh. working uh, by themselves. Yeah, I guess. I, I hadn't In quite, a regular I session, uh, uh -huh, it's a uh -huh, dictation uh -huh. and that's yeah. it. <laughs> no, that, I wonder if that, if that is a negative in feedback that's coming from other people or a lack of... No, we just just think it's differences in uh, Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't know. I'm talking about yeah, no. that, you know, I yeah. don't experience mm -hmm. that as you do, but and I'm wondering yeah. why that is that you have greater difficulty having uh, Seth come through in a situation where there are other people around. I wonder, I don't know, No, I was that asking, wasn't uh, what Robbie meant. No, that's not what you It mean. comes through differently. Yeah, yeah I just meant it was different. Yeah, I, I just meant it was different in class than it is when right. we're here alone. When you just buy yourself. In, in right. a private so, session, do you think, that, go ahead, sir. He is, um, to the point, 
uh, when he comes through, he says good evening or something, and then he says dictation, and he just goes ahead and yeah. dictates a book. Uh. You know, I would say to Robbie, are your fingers tired? Do you want a break or yeah. whatever? Uh -huh. In class, he very rarely goes into that kind of a long monologue, which for us might last over an hour. Uh -huh. Instead, he'll relate to people or he'll come through because of a comment someone asks. Uh -huh. And what Rob meant was it was different. Uh -huh. uh, in his way. Well, it's the way of being. I yeah. see. No, I like it. The one is just to accumulate material for the book. Which do you like the best? Well, I'm a You're little bit prejudiced close. in favor of uh, participating myself. But uh, I've learned uh, over the years that uh, other people are really interested, and uh, each person's interest is just as legitimate as uh, the next. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've learned a lot from that. Uh, we didn't anticipate any such uh, response from yeah. others. It's at all. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you think the quality of the responses uh, or the appreciation or understanding? You must have had some responses that you give people say that's, yeah. you know, you'd go all the way from just incredulous ignorance that would be a response to one of understanding and then one who could fully, you know, could get close to fully understanding it as you do the significance of it. Has had the quality of the response or the appreciation of the importance of it been increasing, do you think, through I think so, yeah. In the last but uh, we, ne we never had, uh, well, uh, experiences that uh, were distasteful. Uh-huh. Oh, good. Yeah. But we were That's aware good. of that. Yeah. The when we, when we first uh, began mm -hmm. to read up, mm -hmm. we discovered that uh, there was such a wide variety of uh, practitioners in the field that it was uh, almost a, a ready-made thing for uh, and that sort of... Uh, yeah, and I'm wondering, have there been um, experiences similar to this historically that people have had that have been I would say negatively tainted in the, meta in the, in the mythologies that we've been forced to live with in the I'd say that's probably general ignorance happened. of that new consciousness. I couldn't. So yeah. that uh, new consciousness or contact with it has, in very many instances, why it's extremely valuable. And in this case, as I, you don't use the word guide, I would tend to think. No, that, I just. Well, you don't use it, but I will myself would tend to think that what you're you doing think. is a is a sort of a, a guiding. It's it's important in that sense. Well, 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 well that yes, guiding, right, but, uh, right. We have to work out. But that, that, that while well, it's very important, that new consciousness, they they've very often been seen as people who were. Uh, you know, uh, demonic or possessed. There are all these kinds yeah. of prejudices that we're right. yeah. Well, we, we began to become aware of that or with even, our reading. Mm -hmm. Or even I'm wondering if I could say that you, you used the word previously where you said you became uh, aware of occult literature. Mm -hmm. uh, occult has been associated, now I'm coming, to, let's say just I'm coming from academic, right. academic, scientific community. The scientific community would deal with matters such as uh, this and they would say this is not this is mysticism. This is not good, objective, hard Western reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the scientific community then would not be able to, or the intellectual, scientifically trained uh, uh, community that's trained in, uh, you know, to be, to be, uh, uh, to be, to be very skeptical, uh, would not been able to until now. Some of the so, so people. So I'm wondering now. Now they're doing things like um, Carillion photography. Right. Where new, 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 new perceptions that have been by certain people who were gifted are becoming objectively, scientifically validatable. Mm -hmm. So that that mix between. So what I'm saying is that maybe that this is a particularly auspicious time for the coming together of a lot of different perceptions. But well, anyway, I'm not sure what I'm saying. Except I would think no. that the, the, your what your, your the reception for the ready, the readiness of the people, or generally concept to receive it, would be yeah. increasing. I mean, I should think that. Well, you see, we think that that's no accident. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's part of the uh, the whole uh, mystique that yeah. uh, Jane. Uh, well, this is these are taking some large leaps here. Yeah. Uh, and I'll ask people to uh, go along with it, but we think that we even chose to be born at this time, so that. Uh, in this particular way, this information could start to be uh, given out. Beautiful. This is important information. This is a curriculum for a world that's wondering about a new consciousness within a certain temporal framework. That's it. And that it is, uh, now, right. it's, it, there's, there is a, a major new 
relationship yeah. to the universal mind that uh, the whole of the human family is coming to at this particular time. Yeah. This information is in touch with that and is extremely important. We, and, we, uh, hope, so. we hope so. Yeah, no, no, I'm, well, I mean, I'm... I'm it, <laughs> is. <laughs> it is. And I, I'm really, I, I just wanted to take one second, I'd like to say to the viewing audience that uh, I'd like to point out, if we could very quickly at this time, the book, The Seth Material, which is, uh, is uh, Jane's and uh, Rob's book they put out. The Seth Material is the one, can you zoom in on it? Yeah? And let them see that it's published by Prentice, by Prentice Hall. Mm -hmm. And another is um, Seth, Seth Speaks. This is a good general description, I think, of the yeah, characteristics of what's yeah. happened. This is the first. Then Seth Speaks, intriguing. Intriguing look at a new consciousness from Seth. Yeah, that was written entirely in the trans state. Yeah, entirely in the trans state. Yeah. And then we have a new book that is now on the shelves, written by Jane. And this is The Education of Oversoul 7. This is out now. This is out in the bookstores now. These are also uh, on the bookshelves. Uh, but this one is on the bookshelves now. It's good background information for you to, for the... Uh, follow up on all the video information that's going to be yeah. coming behind this. And then the one last, which is just about to come out, The Nature of Personal Reality, a Seth book, specific practical. And this has been by Seth. Right, right. that's uh -huh. dictated by Seth. So, and this is not, this is coming out in... Um, Probably uh, late July. Late, late July, July. Yeah. I think July is a very appropriate time. Yeah. There's a, a, a major kind of mm -hmm. conjunction happening yeah. in July. So I would, and they, uh, I would like to just, if I could, thank you very much for this brief well, introduction. You. Extremely good information, and I would like to inform the viewing audience that uh, Jane and Robin have very, very kindly invited us to be present at a class. meeting and class <laughs> in which possibly Seth wow. will come through, okay, and uh, and uh, we'll see if we can maybe in the background get some of that for the That'll video be a, audience. A hectic and if that's okay for you and for Seth. And for the world, I think the world's waiting and ready for Seth and uh, or for Jane. And for, uh, let me just say thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, it was after the Seth material started and this whole thing before I realized that people, you might use them or think of them as symbols, or you might, no matter how you say to them, they have their own fantastic individuality. And whenever any beliefs, even our own, blind you to that you have lost. Whenever you relate to someone as simply a belief or you get your back up and you don't see the reality, then we've won. We'll bring you closer to people. It will not divide you. If, it's, if it divides you, that is not what it is. I bid you good evening. <laughs> and understand your responses to our friend here. For when he speaks, you fear the vocabulary. Because you fear the beliefs that you still are afraid operate. You are afraid that after all, for all of your hard earned knowledge, the others are right. You are not sure of your position and therefore you must defend it uh, with a great uh, vehemence. You sinned in our well-meaning uh, and uh, beautiful friend. Those are beliefs against which you yourselves have fought for so long. And you are afraid uh, that in your heart of hearts you do not uh, trust the joyful integrity of your own being. You are afraid that after all the old stories may be correct and there is something wrong in your creaturehood.
that you are, after all, put down because uh, you are human and that you are, after all, uh, damned because uh, you are what you are and that no matter what you say uh, or do you are originally in one way or another damned you are afraid because uh, our friend Andy is uh, so sincere and so intent that after all what he unconsciously feels uh, and what sometimes uh, comes up uh, in his talk is right after all you must ascend meaning that there is something wrong with where you are and what you are Now, in those terms, what you want to be is within you now and within uh, your glowing uh, creaturehood. As he tried uh, to say, there is uh, no uh, above or below. You are blessed because of your being, not damned because of it. As I have told you often, there is a spiritual uh, biology within your being and it speaks through each of your moments and uh, through uh, your sexual experiences. It speaks when you drink a glass of water or when uh, you uh, wiggle uh, your foot That is also a highly biological nature to your spirituality. Your atoms and your molecules and your cells know themselves to be part of all that is. not question. That does not mean that there is anything wrong with questioning. It does mean that I say to you that you are blessed because you are That your spirituality is known uh, through the glories of your flesh and uh, that your flesh becomes uh, more spiritual uh, because uh, of its existence to the seasons uh, and its experience with the time uh, that you know and or recognize. You form your own uh, reality. I uh, say uh, this to you each week. Yet through your own uh, dream experiences and uh, through the suggestions that I will give uh, you that I hope uh, that you will follow, you will uh, be able uh, to discover this for yourselves. But I hope to be able to show you the different levels of consciousness in which you dwell. Again, as I have uh, said before, you are indeed uh, given uh, the gift of the gods. Uh, you form uh, your reality. 
What a better gift could be given to you. How uh, then uh, could you imagine uh, that you uh, began uh, this present excursion into this uh, current life already damned, uh, flawed, uh, or forsaken? If each of you would uh, simply listen uh, in the quiet of your own mind to the music of your own cells, uh, you would uh, know that the atoms within uh, you speak uh, with a joyful exaltation. Uh, those atoms and the molecules uh, luckily have not uh, read uh, many of the books that you have read uh, and uh, they do not read uh, your newspapers. They know uh, that they are blessed uh, because they are If uh, some of uh, you are uh, more serious uh, people uh, will forgive uh, me and I close uh, my eyes so as not to embarrass you. They know uh, that existence is uh, fun. They realize that uh, fun uh, is a uh, good uh, and uh, joyful and that the gods are uh, play. They uh, recognize uh, that uh, through uh, expressing uh, their own uh, reality, they form uh, these atoms and molecules and cells, the reality that you uh, think of as a physical body. The atoms are within your toe. Do not stop and say, oh, I must be a responsible uh, and a sober and form this toe. Uh, and I must think very carefully before I move, uh, because after all, I am damned uh, to begin with. You would have a summer toe. <laughs> <laughs> now I return, uh, you are. Uh, to your class and to uh, your sales. Oh, great. <laughs> We're going to have a break shortly, but I want to know what to... Your being is important. The fact that you are, my friend, impresses uh, the universe and that impression is never lost. That impression uh, lives uh, in your term, though time uh, itself is forgotten and dies. Your being, uh, as it is, uh, is uh, important. And whatever you do, it is uh, not uh, trivial. When uh, you realize that your being uh, is important, then uh, you will realize that by being uh, yourself, you will uh, do uh, in uh, your terms uh, important things uh, you cannot uh, do uh, <coughs> otherwise. Now we are here a small uh, group and uh, you meet uh, with yourself and with me, many of you, weekly. 
in uh, an intimate relationship. There are those who will listen now uh, to me speak. And uh, I believe uh, that uh, you are there, or didn't, though I cannot uh, see uh, you. You are quite invisible uh, to me. You uh, can see the people in this room, and uh, so you believe in their existence, but uh, they uh, cannot uh, see you, and uh, yet uh, they believe uh, in uh, your existence. We uh, then uh, ask uh, you, that though we cannot see uh, you, we agree uh, that uh, you exist. <laughs> I am sure that you do not need uh, our agreement. Nevertheless, uh, we uh, all uh, ask uh, you to realize when uh, you look in the mirror, you see uh, images uh, of yourself, but you do not perceive uh, the inner self that you know uh, exists. And uh, so uh, each of us here asks each of you to realize that you have uh, an inner identity that you cannot uh, physically perceive, and an inner voice that you do not hear with your ears. Each of us here therefore asks you to admit the validity of your own being, to enjoy the being that you see and feel and touch, and yet to realize that you have still a greater vitality and reality. We ask you in uh, the most scandalous manner possible <laughs> to realize one thing that uh, you are good uh, that you are blessed and that there is nothing wrong uh, with you now there are many levels of consciousness and awareness. And there are ways that things are said and unsaid. There are gestalts or families of consciousness. Each of you belong to such families. You are yourselves, yet as you have physical families, you have families of consciousness. So most of the people in this room belong uh, to a family called Samari. And so, and you give uh, the message to yourself for you are the message. The medium uh, is uh, not uh, the message. You are the message. If only we can now uh, show uh, you, uh, yourselves enough. Then uh, you will uh, trust yourselves enough to explore those dimensions of your own uh, greater reality that no one else can ever know or whatever explore. There are journeys of consciousness that no one uh, can take uh, but you. And uh, yet as you take them, uh, you take steps 
in other terms, uh, for others, uh, and uh, you leave a mark for your brothers and sisters to follow in their own explorations. Uh, cards uh, that say I have been here, the place is safe, I leave uh, you a sign of peace, your being uh, alone uh, is important and has a validity beyond any philosophy. That is uh, the message that you are uh, trying uh, to give uh, to yourself. You are each trying to uh, rediscover for yourselves uh, in your terms uh, now after centuries of myths and distortions the validity of your own being. I ask uh, you not uh, to trust the validity of my being, which is none of your concern, <laughs> but to trust the validity of your being, which is very much of your concern. Now class members here know what I am doing. I ask you then to sense the energy in this voice and uh, know that it is uh, your own uh, joyful vitality. I ask you to feel it and enjoy it as your own. And uh, those who may view this class, I request that uh, you also feel uh, the energy of your being and uh, know that this voice is but a dim echo of uh, that vitality and uh, validity that is your own. And uh, therefore we leave uh, this esoteric uh, class <laughs> and uh, return uh, you uh, to the cells uh, that you think That you know, you may find yourself with a random thought that does not seem uh, to fit in with what you are doing or thinking at the time, and so you dismiss it. It seems uh, random because it does not appear to fit in uh, with your organized picture of reality, but it is an important mosaic that you throw away. So I also joyfully and playfully and creatively challenge each of you, even now, derpy boy over here, to become more and more aware of your waking experience and of those stray thoughts that come in your terms like thieves in the night. They are not official, you do not accept them. The intellect says, oh no. Listen to those thoughts. Open your mind a mate further. In your ordinary waking life, in the middle of your ordinary pursuits, and uh, see what miracles are there. And I say, miracles. Miracles because they can help uh, transform uh, your own understanding and your own reality. And you have been now. Uh, Blind uh, to them because you fear you will uh, lose uh, your identity. 
Your identity instead, you see, can grow and include such experiences. Now I told you that class was quickening. So the time is riper for each of you. So this week particularly, besides the suggestions that I gave, uh, be gentle with your own experience. Do not uh, be such a disciplinarian uh, that when stray uh, thoughts or intuitions uh, come uh, to you, you dismiss uh, them. Uh, of your own uh, beings are filled uh, with flowers that you do not recognize. Uh, you do not uh, stop uh, to look at them uh, or smell uh, their odors. They are not official flowers or official uh, Sometimes you try to be uh, too uh, practical. You have uh, lovely eyes. Those eyes do not try to be practical. They see out of the joy of their being hustle themselves. The right eye does not say is uh, what I am seeing uh, right and the left eye uh, does not say uh, is what I am seeing uh, wrong. They see uh, together and in being themselves they see uh, for you, for the atoms within your eyes do not see uh, this image uh, though you uh, do. You interpret the image and you see what you see. The eyes are uh, vision. The reality of the atoms and molecules uh, that exist within the eye, that vision uh, is far different. And yet there is no uh, disagreement. So there is no disagreement between your official reality and uh, those uh, unofficial realities that sometimes sneak through. I'm out. Ah. <coughs> Kim? Mike? Yeah, that's all I have. Hi, people! <laughs> I think it's extremely important. I want to thank you. Very, very impressive. Uh, have you enjoyed it? Yes, I really have. You have. That's I really it. have. I think class did too. Oh, yeah, the me. class did. Class has been over now for quite some time, but the events that transpired during those years will never really have an ending. And as Seth might have said, in other terms, have yet to begin.